Welcome to the Board of Supervisors meeting for Tuesday, October 1st, 2019. I'm Linda Kincaid with the Coalition for Elder and Disability Rights, shortened to CEDAR. We've investigated false imprisonment isolation of conservatives throughout California since 2010. The longest running and best documented case is right here in Oakland, about a mile and a half from these council chambers. In 2011, Eleanor Frerichs, a wealthy white woman, woman, married her close friend and neighbor of 10 years, an African-American man. A psychologist, a psychologist alleged there was a possibility that Eleanor's African-American husband and African-American friends might financially exploit Eleanor. Six weeks later, Eleanor was under conservatorship of the public guardian who took control of Eleanor's assets. There was no longer any way for anyone to financially abuse Eleanor. In 2012, the public guardian allowed Eleanor basic civil rights. She was allowed to stay in her home at that time. She was allowed contact with her husband, contact with her friends, and the public guardian did not interfere with Eleanor's estate plan. But Legal Assistance for Seniors, LAS, was not going to allow the African-American husband to inherit Eleanor's millions. LAS attorneys James Jerry and Kirsten Voyle sought a restraining order against Eleanor's husband. They alleged financial elder abuse and undue influence. Now recall, Eleanor had no access to her funds. There was no way for anyone to financially abuse Eleanor. There was a five-day trial in which Judge C. Don Clay found no abuse. I'd like to read some of Judge Clay's comments from the transcript. <clears throat> I don't think there is enough evidence in this record to show that he engaged in some kind of financial abuse. I don't have any competent evidence to show he engaged in any type of undue influence. Now speaking to Eleanor and her husband, I'm not going to have it where you have no contact. I'm going to tell you that right now. So Mr. Taylor, what I'm saying is you get to visit her. I'm not going to have you not be able to see her. She wants to see you. She's 89 years old. She has a right to see you. Well, LAS didn't really like that decision. And they went on to do everything they could to make sure that Eleanor did not get to see her husband. In 2013, licensed professional fiduciary Scott Phipps became Eleanor's conservator. Phipps spent $50,000 of Eleanor's funds to annul her marriage. He spent more of her funds to revoke her estate plan. He denies her nearly all visitors and phone calls. Court records include extensive elder abuse, records replete with perjury by James Ruggieri, executive director of LAS, Kirsten Voiles, managing attorney of LAS, and conservator Scott Phipps, who was VP of LAS Board of Directors until recently. Hi, my name is Kathy Rodriguez, and I want to um, thank Nate Miley for introducing me to Venus Jest and to Miss Kincaid right here. They have given me an overwhelming abundance of information. Um, first, I'd like to state that I want to read uh, Social Services uh, mission statement. To enrich the lives of Alameda County residents through visionary policies and accessibility, responsive and effective services. We need to work together for the best interest of the elderly and the families they love and devote to provide best evidence-based practices, training and research that will help conservatives, families, courts, and the community to reduce the family conflict about the care and safety of their aging loved ones, as well as the cost of the court fees and the families that can be prevented if they would follow probate court rules and probate and California court rules. There is no program to keep them accountable for oversight programs like Quality Assurance Unit, Policy and Procedures Committee, Evidence-Based Practices Committees. What they need to do is they need to do a survey with conservatives and their families because this is happening to my family and this is the second time. What they do is they hide behind the courts and they blame the courts for the unethical conduct when in fact it's them that's writing reports that families are suffering behind. There is no safeguard to protect the elderly from the abuse of the social services program, the public guardian. Um, in my dad's case, Emily Galimba 
when my dad passed away, there was never an accounting made. We never knew how much money he had in his assets, all his assets. We have no clue what happened to him. Now with my aunt's case, Chanel Salimba, who is my aunt's conservator, um, you'll have all the other names that I provided there that are um, have misconduct. Um, what he did in a report is he he uh, slandered my name and made defamation of my defamation of my character without talking to me or my family. Um, I work for the county. Um, I'm a county probation officer for 24 years, and I'm very appalled that he slandered my name. He made accusations of theft. Um, did not add my family into the report. The, the, the report also states abuse by Rose Rivera, withholding medical treatment, unhealthy homes, many men hanging out at her home. Um, and I want to go on to say that in this doc, in these documents that I provided right here, it will have her restraining order that she got from her own daughter, where she abused, locked her daughter up, physically and mentally abused her own daughter, and she did the same thing to my aunt and I have recordings of that of my aunts. All along, while well, social services still allows her to see my aunt to where I was restrained to see my aunt because of unethical conduct by county counsel Jessica Chia and Roger Spencer. Lied to the court and said I did made my aunt cry for whatever. Reasons that weren't true. Um, also, I'd like to state really quick is that there was an incident where my aunt was abused by Rose Rivera in, outside the courtroom, and county counsel Jessica Chia was there, Roger Spencer was there, and also um, Charles Edwards of Adult Protective Services. Where all their report was written, my aunt pointed out Rose Rivera, not once did any of them tell the judge when we went to the hearing. These are mandated court reporters. And I have all this for Nate Miley to provide everything that I stated as true and correct. Thank you, Ms. Rogers. Something needs to happen. Um, I recently applied for the advisory adult committee, and I was uh, denied. 